Have fun, Dan. Number three, Kieran Kelly. Number four, Garod O'Leary. Number five, David Stapleton. Garod. Number six, Damien Maloney. Number seven, Stephen Welch. Number eight, Andrew Brennan. Number nine, Paddy O'Brien. Number ten, Davy Maloney. Number eleven, Peter O'Reilly. Number twelve, Dennis O'Connor. Number thirteen, David O'Neill. Number fourteen, Paddy McNamara. Number fifteen, Alan O'Connor. Fourteen. Number 16, Willie Tobin. 17, Mark Keane. 18, Owen Ryan. 19, Richie McHugh. 20, Rory O'Neill. 21, Liam Walsh. 22, Mike McKenna. 23, Peter Hafty. 24, Shane O'Neill. that's going to be put on here tonight as regards Holland and Limerick. We'll be wearing these again on the 30th of August, wherever it is in an All Ireland final intermediate. We are here tonight to go down to do a job and put Limerick Holland back on the map again. That's all the ones I want to say. We put Holland back on the map because it's not there at the moment. But we'll put it there and we deserve to put it there. They say you lose one to win one. We were here this time last year again. And we came out losers. We're coming out winners tonight. Every guy thinking inside here, he's not going to be beat in any position in the field he's playing on. Now, the only mistakes we're making this year since we started, we're slow to start. So the minute the ball is turned in tonight, lads, we're off of those blocks and hammering tongues every line in the field. We're going to be winners in every line. And if we get the ball in inside our full power line, they'll finish it off. But if they don't get the ball, they can't do it. Everybody connected in that. Dennis O'Connor comes out to take the 65s. Alan O'Connor takes the tossing freeze. If we get a penalty, Alan O'Connor takes it. He goes to the juggler. Straight at it. Back it in it. Right, go back to Jollard. Just do another bit of water up there. And we'll be going here in 10 minutes. Good evening, Davin. Your timing is impeccable as Limerick make their way out onto the field here of Semple Stadium this evening for this Munster Intermediate Hurling Final for 2008. Limerick unchanged from the team that was announced on the match programme, playing in their second consecutive Munster Intermediate Hurling Final tonight. Of course, this time last year, they played in this very venue against Waterford and stuck with Waterford for about 50 minutes of that game. And in the last 10 minutes, Waterford got a couple of goals and pulled away from Limerick on that occasion. Occasion. and Jerry Mullinow has the same management team in place this season he'll be hoping that uh, Limerick can this time claim Munster Intermediate Glory the team are out on the field Tipperary have been out for quite some time now TJ Ryan is here with me in commentary as you mentioned TJ it's a beautiful evening first and foremost there's a breeze blowing and I was down pitch side about half an hour ago and it was blowing from the town in goal away to our right into the Kalinan and Terrace but swerving into the stand yeah it's not that strong at all to be honest this, it, I don't think it'll have a major effect in the game as you said it's very dry down there we've had a perfect couple of days so conditions are very close to ideal conditions ideal then here at Semple Stadium this evening the two teams will run down through them very quickly Limerick have Barry Hennessy in goals it's Tom Condon Kieran Carey and Gerard O'Leary making up the full back line with David Stapleton Damian Maloney and Steve Walsh in the half back line Andrew Brennan and Paddy O'Brien are at midfield with David Maloney Peter O'Reilly and Dennis O'Connor in the half forward line with David David O'Neill, Paddy McNamara and Alan O'Connor making up the inside forward line for Limerick. David Maloney scored one goal and two points last time out and the win against Clare here a number of weeks ago in the Munster Senior Hurling semi-final. And Dennis O'Connor comes into the half forward line and Alan O'Connor, TJ moves to corner forward but we're expecting perhaps a switch between those two players. Yeah, there's a, there's a possibility that it could be changed around there. Like Limerick have a lot of options in the forwards and even there tonight I come down and see uh, I was wasn't aware of the subs during the week, but I see Mark Keane, Owen Ryan, Dan Hanley. I said, I suppose it's surprising when we have Mark Keane on the bench. 
what I'm saying? So you never have a lot of options with the forwards. It's it's surprising that Dennis O'Connor is named the wing forward. The under 21s had gone for Dan Hanley. He's a sub tonight. Noan Ryan's a sub. So it'll just be interesting to see how it goes. In fairness, these guys they've had a, they had a good win the last day against Clare here in Turles. So I, you know, I said they've made one or two changes to the team. So I suppose you have to go with the management and what they've picked. You know, it's been a long layoff for Limerick since that Munster semi-final win against Clare. It was the same day, of course, that Limerick seniors were defeated to Clare here at Semple Stadium. That's a long layoff. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. You know, I mean, and these guys have had between under twenty ones and different things. But you know, I mean, that, that's just the way it is. Like, you know, I mean, it's probably the same for Tipperary. They've been off a while as well. But like, from from the point of view of not having a game, it would be a bit of a negative. All right, you, you, you certainly would have to kind of say that you'd be kind of hoping that you I mean the things be okay in the night. Tipperary then line out as follows: Matthew Ryan in goals. It's Liam Mackey, Michael Costello, and Ronan Sherlock in the full back line with Evan Hanley, Jim Bob McCarthy, and John Lillis in the half back line. Timmy Minogue, Michael Harling in midfield with Noel Hogan, who's captain the side, wearing 10. Cahill Dillon wears 11, and Garrod Ryan wears 12. Jody Ryan, David Morrissey, and Patrick Maher making up the inside forward line for Patrick Swell. And TJ, not much known about this Patrick Swell side, but one name that uh, Jerry Mullino told us to watch out for earlier in the week was the centre back, Jim Bob McCarthy, a man who was, we were told, within seconds of taking the place of Conor O'Mahony in the uh, Munster Senior Hurling Championship. Before we hear from TJ Ryan, we stand for our Ron Levine. Pretty much all in readiness, our uh, crowd effects mic this evening hanging right beside the speaker, so you've got a fine rendition of our Ron Levine. TJ, before our Ron Levine, we were talking about the Tipperary side, I suppose Jim Bob McCarthy is one man that uh, we were told to watch out for, but n apart from that, not a, less, not a lot else known of Tip. Not, 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 not known, to be honest, right? They scored 121 in the semi-final against Cork, which is a powerful score, and they did a, a large spread of scores throughout their team. Like Jim Bob McCarthy at centre-back is one we were told to keep an eye on. Also at centre-forward, Cahal Dillon from Aherlo scored six points in that semi final over Cork so he's going to keep an eye on as well Monster Intermediate Hurling Final of 2008 is underway and straight away it's Limerick that gather possession of it down this near side it was Peter O'Reilly of Patrick Swell and hand pass across the centre towards David Maloney the man that got 1-2 last time out going forward towards the 21 chance of the first point of the evening there it is a fine score for Limerick and from the stick of David Maloney the man from the Black Rock Club the first score goes to Limerick it goes to David Maloney it comes 24 seconds into the game and that is just the start that Jerry Mullen and Cole would have wanted exactly a good strike by David Maloney all the hard work done by Peter Royal at centre forward took a heavy challenge knocked the ball and David Maloney good score goal puck out sent down this near side of the park looking to win possession of it David Stapleton of Doom plays it forward towards Paddy O'Brien O'Brien's first touch isn't uh, the greatest and it's won by Jody Ryan from the Sean Tracy's club in Tipperary hand pass across the centre intercepted and cleared by Damian Maloney down the far side only gathered by Tipperary towards halfway then taking that one forward as Evan Hanley dropping it around the square good touch there from the stick of Kieran Carey breaks it towards Garrod O'Leary and O'Leary takes this one out it goes for a 65 but Kieran Carey gets his first touch of the evening and uh, a lot made of the fact that Kieran Carey playing at full back this evening in yet another championship game for the uh, veteran that is Kieran Carey and TJ a lot of the younger players spoke through the week about how influential Kieran Carey was when they were growing up it must be great to be playing with such a legend this evening absolutely if you look through the Limit team it's generally a young team you know what I'm saying so to 
have somebody like that in the dressing room and on the pitch is obviously a big plus for Limerick and a good touch there because it seems to be a bit of danger and he's got to touch at the right time. Well, it's the aforementioned Jim Bob McCarthy that's going to take this 65 for Tipperary, picks it and strikes it in. Looks to be a good one. It's over the crossbar. The sides are level here at Semple Stadium and Jim Bob McCarthy gets his first score of the evening and indeed Tipperary's first score as well. It comes one minute and uh, 54 seconds into the opening half and uh, a lively start so far. Sides are level at a point apiece on Limerick's Live 95 FM on Munster Intermediate hurling final night and Simple Stadium goal puck out sent down the far side looking to win it was Noel Hogan the captain for Tipperary lays it back now towards Jody Ryan far side in fact it's Patrick Maher Maher plays this one inside it's won by the goalkeeper Barry Hennessy comes towards the edge of the small square lays it off to Kieran Carey and Carey clears this one up the far sideline very close to it Cahill Dillon keeps it in for Tipperary at last touch the stick of Steve Walsh from Glenroo it's gone out for a line ball the line ball in favour of Tipperary across on the far side midway between the 45 and the 21 of Semple Stadium the pitch looking in absolutely top quality here this evening what else would you expect on Semple Stadium ahead of the All-Ireland hurling quarterfinals here on Sunday pitch looking beautiful as ever line ball to be taken by Timmy Minogue sent across the centre touched the Limerick man it didn't in fact says the uh, linesman or the umpire he said it last touched the Tipperary man it's gone to the right hand side and wide first wide of the evening goes to uh, Tipperary it's a point apiece here at Semple Stadium and a goal puck out to come from Barry Hennessy yeah good start in fairness as I said probably by both teams be happy enough but I suppose what we're looking for tonight I suppose, is a result you know, I mean as I said it's hard to come to Turles and get a result but we've been beaten now and it's in the ones here and obviously the scene is going the way it is I think a shot in the arm must title for intermediate tonight would be lovely Timmy Minogue gathers possession of him and it's intercepted by Damian Maloney of Effen who clears it down the far side towards Andrew Brennan takes it towards the 65 under pressure lays it inside now towards Alan O'Connor operating a corner forward now at this moment in time swings the stick it's dropping in around the square chance here for Limerick it's well taken inside chance of a goal from the full forward Paddy McNamara the referee has said he's over carrying it it's going to be a free the free is going in favour of Tipperary but McNamara won the ball above the head of Michael Costello but credit the tip full back he held up Paddy McNamara very well in that okay yeah he's looking down like Paddy Mac is definitely full head over the full back like so he cut the ball very easily but just over carried it just did the wrong thing but at the wrong time but hopefully if we can get a few more high balls in there maybe something will come of it from the free Michael Harding won it laid it in but Steve Walsh of Glen Roo lays the ball off now towards Damian Maloney clears it near side of the park over the head of pretty much everybody and Jim Bob McCarthy is there to win it his uh, touch has taken it away from him by Peter O'Reilly the referee has said he fouled Jim Bob McCarthy it's going to be a free the free is going in favour of the home county Tipperary who are favoured by the breeze in this opening half we mentioned that when we started it's blowing from the town goal away to our right hand side into the Kalinan and Terrace as we watch it here from our perch in the old stand of uh, Semple Stadium the free going to be taken by Michael Harding picks this one and drops it in around the square danger here for Limerick who's going to be forced to react to it Kieran Carey breaks it down only as far as the tip man Noel Hogan who sends it in but sends it to the right and wide second wide for Tipperary but a chance there from Noel Hogan from the breaking ball he was forced to react to it but thankfully TJ he shot going to the right and wide yeah you just hit the side netting looked dangerous for a minute but uh, he said, I'm quick onto the breaking ball there in fairness Noel Hogan was he's actually the captain of the Tipperary team this evening Barry Hennessy takes the short low goal puck out towards Peter O'Reilly who won it and played it forward only the tip man gathers possession of it and John Lillis now down this near side clears it towards the 45 out comes the Limerick man that is Tom Condon of Knockaderry lays the ball only as far as Michael Harding Harding on halfway launching this one in. Kieran Carey looks to go under it over his head of the uh, experience Kieran Carey still battling for possession of it support arriving from Tom Condon and Condon brings this one away there's the knock at man on the 21 as he strikes this one towards the opposite 45 yard line up goes the hand of the tip man only breaks it towards David Maloney gets the first touch on and Maloney has it now on the 21 taken away from him by Evan Hanley Hanley done well on that occasion you'll have to say for Tipperary now off towards Timmy Minogue and Minogue clears this one on towards the opposite 45 where the ball is broken and won by Tipperary Tipperary playing this one in as the big centre forward Cahill Dillon that's a fine score from pretty much near the sideline as Cahill Dillon caught it and struck it all at once it's over the crossbar and Tipperary take the lead the first score from play from Tipperary comes from the Aherlow man Cahill Dillon yeah serious score we kind of had Mark down before the game and said he scored six points in the semi-final that's a serious score from play there like he was right in the sideline practically two points to one six minutes played in the opening half the uh, goal puck out is uh, won by Limerick and he was fouled as well
well was the Limerick man. It's going to be a free right on halfway across on the far side. And Dennis O'Connor, the man from Granabalangari, who's going to take this one across on the far side. He's into the breeze here at uh, Simple Stadium, right on halfway. About uh, 20 in from the far sideline. The Granabalangari club man picks this one and strikes it. It has the distance. Does it have the accuracy? The umpire watches. Yes, it has. That's a fine score from Dennis O'Connor. He's first of the evening. It comes from a free right from halfway and into the breeze, TJ. That's a fine yeah, score. Yeah, a good score. He's practically on the, on the halfway line. I just see there Barry Hennessy the last couple of puck outs. He's decided to go low and maybe short towards midfield. So I'm not sure if that's a tactic at the moment not to put the ball down top of the tape effect. Goal puck out sent down the far side. It's Steve Walsh that wins possession of it. The man from Glenru for Limerick taking it forward towards the 45. Still going as Walsh. Goes to ground. Has support far side. The support from Alan O'Connor of Bally Brown. A couple in from the far sideline onto the 45. Turns his man and goes towards the 21. Support further down the far side from Dennis O'Connor. O'Connor from the sideline strikes this one in. That's a fine score from Dennis O'Connor. A tight enough angle, about 28 yards out on the uh, pretty much the sideline. Dennis O'Connor gets his second score of the evening. He's first from open play and it comes seven and a half minutes in. It follows 34 seconds after his last point. Yeah, it looks sharp and fairness. Good score. A lot of hard work done there by Alan O'Connor and fairness. Him, so inexperienced player at this level. So good work done by him. Good puck out. Won by Patrick Maher and lost again. And Party O'Brien launches this one forward for Limerick. Dropping on the opposite 45 where Jim Bob McCarthy picks it for Tipperary and plays it towards Lee Mackey of Carrick Davins down the far side. Launches it long towards the 45 yard line. Up goes the hand of the tip man. Wins possession of it. That's Jody Ryan. Ryan sends this one in but sends it to the left hand side and wide. That's Tipperary's third wide of the evening. We've played eight minutes and seven seconds of the opening half. And Limerick lead here by three points to two. A good composed yeah, from Limerick. In fairness to both teams even as it is good promising game in progress here like I said it's lively I mean it's end to end and there isn't much between both teams in the open 10 minutes Barry Hennessy the Kilmallock club man takes this goal puck out sends this one high and down the centre of the park looking to win possession of it or Limerick breaking back there and winning it is David Stapleton the man from Dune takes it towards halfway now on towards the opposite 65 and still going to the 45 Stapleton hand pass across the centre intercepted by the uh, Tipperary man Jim Bob McCarthy he's lost it and David Maloney is in there hand pass down the far side the referee Pat Casey from Waterford has awarded a free David Maloney was fouled as he hand passed the ball off down the far side perhaps an advantage could have been played because Andrew Brennan was set off in the run but the referee has awarded the free and noted the black book as well to the Tipperary man and uh, David Maloney just receiving a slight little bit of treatment there was a doubt about Andrew Brennan he was suffering uh, with the flu when uh, training took place last Monday night at the Gaelic grounds I was out there myself and spoke to Jerry Munlo he told me that uh, Andrew had a, a dose of the flu was taking antibiotics but that seems to have cleared up and on that occasion perhaps TJ Ryan an advantage could have been played and it could have been true yeah it could have been true it's probably hard to say that a goal would have been on but it, it, like we resulted in a free straight in front yeah. of the goal so you'd expect a point to come of it but in fairness it was a sweet rob by David Maloney as the centre back was just coming away it, and he kind of just took it off his hurley as, as sweet as ever you'd see free then for Limerick it's going to be Alan O'Connor who's going to take this one he's the captain for Limerick as well this evening the Bally Brown club man he's about 43 yards out from goal dead straight in front of the post picks it and strikes it over the crossbar there was never a doubt about it Limerick race into a two point lead four points to two and Alan O'Connor is off the mark for his first score of the evening it comes nine minutes and 56 seconds into the game TJ yeah in fairness if ours are moving pretty well I think Jerry Manlow will be happy with the opening ten minutes to be four points to two up that's the thoughts of TJ Ryan. The goal puck out won by Dennis O'Connor down the far sideline. Strikes this one in. That's another fine score from the Granite Bell and Gary Clubman. Takes his tally to three. Takes Limerick's tally to uh, five. And that was a quick puck out from the tip goalkeeper Matthew Ryan down the far side. Dennis O'Connor was all on his own and struck it over the crossbar. Well intercepted. But in fairness, he was still a long way out. He was still near midfield and it was a fine strike. 5-2. Goal puck out. Sent long down the centre on this occasion. It's won by Limerick. And David Maloney pulls in a forward towards Dennis O'Connor doesn't quite get to it instead it's the tip man that clears this one down the centre of the park far side broken down towards the tip man and again goes uh, Don, Tom Condon to try and win possession of it Condon goes to ground no free forthcoming and three Limerick players and three Tipperary players battle for possession it's the tip man that have it it's Cahill Dillon lays it back towards Michael Harding Harding is brilliantly blocked down by his opposite number Paddy O'Brien and O'Brien plays this ball forward inside looking to find full forward Paddy McNamara breaks towards David O'Neill O'Neill goes to ground the referee awards the free 
The free is for Limerick midway between the 21 and the 45 in line with the right hand post as we watch it here from our commentary perch away to our right hand side facing the town goal is Alan O'Connor. It's a chance to put Limerick four to the good and Alan O'Connor standing over this one the edge of the semicircle picks it and strikes it in strikes it over the crossbar six points to two Limerick rests into a four point lead and yeah. play some good hurling Just starting well. to get in top playing good hurling in, in fairness Pyle Bryan played a lovely ball into the full forward line there free one by David O'Neill as had Nell O'Connor hopefully was scored him all day 11 and a half minutes played in the opening half 6 to Limerick 4 to, or 2 to Tipperary 4 between them and Limerick playing into the breeze which seems to be dying down again goal puck out sent down the far side of the park won by Evan Hanley for Tipperary on to the Limerick 45 hand pass inside Kieran Carey read it like you would a good novel knocks it out over the sideline far side of the field it's going to be a line ball the line ball is for Tipperary and a chance for Jody Ryan perhaps to take this one in in fact, he's left it to Michael Harding, the man from Golden Kilfekel down the far side of uh, Semple Stadium, midway between the 45 and the 21. You're in tune with Limerick's Live 95 FM on the Munster Intermediate Hurling Final for 2008. Line ball going to be taken by Tipperary with Michael Harding. Sends it across the centre, but sends it to the right-hand side and wide. That's Tipperary's fourth wide of the game, TJ, so far. Limerick yet to register a wide, and they lead by four. Yeah, and that's probably maybe a small difference, I suppose, in this early stage of the game but getting that ball there Kieran Carey read it very well small bit of danger on onto it like a light Barry Hennessy takes the goal puck out down this near side of the park looking to win it David Maloney lost possession of it and John Lillis gets it back for Tipperary battle on for possession and David Stapleton does well to half win it and lay it towards Maloney again down this near side pulled on by Peter O'Reilly across the centre and won by Limerick through Paddy O'Brien across the centre now towards David O'Neill on towards the 45 onto the 21 David O'Neill strikes it in and strikes it over the crossbar there's Five points between them. David O'Neill gets his first score of the evening at Semple Stadium. It's seven points to two, and Limerick playing with some confidence. Yeah, again, the assist came from Pyle O'Brien, who's actually starting to kind of get on top in the middle of the field, but David O'Neill looked very lively in the corner as well, in fairness to him, he was out very quick. Five points between them. The winners of tonight's game go straight through to the All-Ireland Hurling Final at the end of uh, July, the goal, or the end of August, I should say. The goal puck out, sent down the centre of the park, out over the sideline, not kept in play by the Tipperary man, despite the best effort of Cahill Dillon it's gone out over this near sideline it's going to be a line ball in favour of Limerick and it's going to be David Stapleton of Dune who's standing right here beneath us in our commentary perch midway between the 65 and the 45 yard line Stapleton to take this line ball just a tad away to the left closer to the 45 than the 65 he's hit the linesman it's gone out over this near sideline a poor line ball from David Stapleton not one of his greatest TJ No I suppose you know what I mean that's just sometimes you see that like just been straight back out over the lane but you know what I mean I suppose we'll forgive him that one for the moment we will especially when we're leading by five seven to Limerick two to Tipperary on Limerick's live 95 FM in the Munster Intermediate Hurling Final for 2008 line ball going to be taken by Michael Harding the Tipperary man comes very close towards the Limerick bench and then takes the line ball sends it across the centre last touch to Limerick man I would have thought the linesman has awarded the door in favour of Limerick down this near side perhaps a little bit fortunate to get that one but uh, we'll take it the line ball is taken quickly by Gary Garrod O'Leary across the centre towards David Stapleton and Stapleton lays this one now back towards Garrod O'Leary the drumming at Lacka club man launches this one on towards the 45 yard line where it's won by Tipperary and cleared down this near side of the park it might come back again towards uh, the uh, wing back David Stapleton over his head goes to ground the referee says play away as he looks for a free leans over this uh, slither now as in goes the body of Damian Maloney to help him the Tipperary man has a Patrick Maher the referee is awarded a free the free for Tipperary the Limerick supporters I think were claiming that Maher picked that one off the ground the referee didn't spot it he's given the free in favour of Tipperary and Jody Ryan from the Sean Tracy's club has made his way across this near side only about four yards in from the sideline about 26 yards out from the goal so it's at a bit of an angle the breeze blowing pretty much into his face as Jody Ryan stands over this one crouches over it picks it and strikes it now it looks to be going to the right hand side it is gone to the right it is gone wide for Tipperary's fifth of the game so far. They still trail by five points, seven to two. We're midway through the first half, TJ. Yeah, I just see the tip bench here getting a bit maybe animated there because I suppose at this stage in the game, five points down, they brought Patrick Maher out to wing forward. They may want to change in the forward just positional switches because uh, at this stage you wouldn't want to be going too far behind, you know. Dennis O'Connor has one possession of the goal puck out for Limerick. Forward towards Steve Walsh, but Walsh gives that one away far too easily. And Tipperary set up the counter attack with Cahill Dillon on the 45 yard line, far side. Jamie Maloney goes in shoveling for it as well Jody Ryan picks it up it's gone out over the far 
far sideline. Line ball going in favour of the Tipperary men. It's about 40 yards out from the goal far stand side and there looks to be an injury to Tom Condon as well on the far side. I didn't see what happened to him. He just threw the hurley down and seems to be doing a stretch across on the far side. The referee Pat Casey of Waterford. His attention has now been drawn to it and in goes Paulie McAuliffe, the physio for Limerick, just to take a look at uh, Tom Condon, the Knockaderry club man. I didn't see what happened there, TJ, but uh, seems to be is the hand or a leg injury one or the other. I know they are at opposite, opposite ends of the body, but I think it's a leg injury. Looks for to be Tom limping. Or it looks to be limping. I don't. I don't think it was a belt. Now I'd say something more, maybe a, a, just a strain or something, a pull muscle or something. But I just see there in the last few minutes that the tip number twelve there, um, Gerard Ryan. They actually uh, tip boys after bringing him back now as an extra back man, right? And so Tipper playing with five forwards and Gerard O'Leary is a free man there at the moment. So it'll just be interesting to see how that pans out over the next four or five minutes. Line ball to be taken by Steve Walsh down the far side of the field and takes a good line ball on towards the 45 where Alan O'Connor got a touch to it but didn't get it all that far away. Paddy O'Brien in there to win it back for Limerick. Plays this one forward now looking to win it or Tipperary and Ronan Sherlock. Sherlock plays this ball out of the fence but it's well gathered by Paddy O'Brien on this 45 as he goes forward. He's got support down this near side. O'Brien goes the whole way himself onto the 21. Inside chance of a goal for David O'Neill. It's in the net. It's a goal for Limerick and a goal for David O'Neill. And Limerick are playing some fine hurling. They lead one goal and seven points to two points. And David O'Neill, the South Liberties club man, sticks that one to the back of the net. Limerick lead by eight, TJ. Yeah, even though tip of an extra man, Limerick actually had two men over there actually when that ball was finally delivered. But Paddy O'Brien is definitely doing the damage in the middle of the field at the moment. The last couple of scores have come off him and he's really doing damage at the moment. 17 minutes played. The goal puck out won by Limerick down the far side. Peter O'Reilly takes it towards the 21. Strike this one in from an angle but strikes it to the left hand side and wide and first wide of the night for Limerick by my uh, reckoning anyway 18 minutes and 6 seconds played Limerick lead by 8 1 goal and 7 to Limerick 2 points to goal puck out from Matthew Ryan away to our right hand side sends it long down the centre of the park Limerick look to win possession of it and that man Paddy O'Brien in there again battling for it doesn't win clean possession of it now and instead it's Tipperary down the far side through Tommy Minogue scrappily wins it and hand passes it towards Michael Harding Harding on the 45 strikes this one in and strikes it over the crossbar that's Tipperary's first score in 12 minutes it comes from the midfielder Michael Harding it's a point for Tipperary it's one goal and seven now to uh, Limerick and three points for Tipperary gap back to seven 18 minutes played in the first half TJ yeah that was the score that Tip Bell needed I suppose I mean they seem to be struggling there on the middle of the field and struggling to get scores so they needed that to keep in some kind of way in touch thoughts of TJ Ryan there has a uh, goal puck out sent down the far side and uh, returned back there again but Kieran Carey back there to sweep it up for Limerick. He had a fine game the last day against Clare as well. Plays this one forward towards Alan O'Connor. Very close towards that far sideline. O'Connor does well. Gathers possession of it on the 21. Of course a lot of these Limerick hurlers have points to prove that they perhaps should have been on the senior team. Ball sent down the far side of the park. Looking to win possession of it. Tom Condon of Nocaderry on the 45. Clears this one towards Gerard O'Leary. Huge one down. Dropping in the opposite 45. Alan O'Connor doesn't get to it and Ronan Sherlock of Silvermines. Hand passes it back towards Michael Costa of Drummond Inch and the Drummond Inch man on the 21 clears this one towards halfway up goes the stick of Paddy O'Brien didn't break clean possession of it instead it's Tom Condon winning it and clearing it near side of the park looking to find Paddy McNamara he's man out in front of him but there to win it back for Limerick David Maloney the man from Brock, Brock sends this one in David Maloney and sends it over the crossbar another fine score from David Maloney one goal and eight points now for Limerick three points for Tipperary Limerick lead by eight with 20 minutes and one second exactly played. Yeah, good score by David Maloney in fairness to him. Like he, was, he was out a long way as well. But as I said, the forwards are working very hard. And as I said, maybe unlike the three ones this time when they are on top, they've won eight in the scoreboard after 20 minutes, which is a good return. Goal puck out, sent down this near side of the park. Again, over the head of everybody. But Damien Maloney, the man from Effen, goes back, wins possession of it and hand pass off now towards uh, David Stapleton. Stapleton brings this one clear towards the 45, took it out over the sideline. TJ doesn't agree with the linesman on that occasion. He was very, very close to it. Stapleton just dropped the ball and it bounced, I think, on the line. Perhaps it, looked it may have been over, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, a tight call nonetheless. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He's closer to it than us, but it didn't look out. But uh, in fairness, we were talking about before the match there about the long lay after the Limerick head. It certainly doesn't yeah. seem to have affected them because they've really started very well here. They've played a number of challenge games. The latest last Friday night against Newtown Chandram. The line ball going to be taken by Michael Harding. 
Decided not to take the quick one and the Tipperary fans getting on his back as he takes a poor line ball only as far as Andrew Brennan down the far side. Our Limerick uh, perhaps a little bit early to be talking about Munster Glory just quite yet as Timmy Minogue plays this one inside. Looking to find full forward David Morrissey under a bit of pressure. Off towards Patrick Maher. Maher gathers it on the 13 at an angle. Goes towards the goal. Kieran Carey up against him. Sends it across the centre. Good touch though from the Limerick man David Stapleton. And Limerick uh, look to win possession of it there now with uh, David Maloney goes to ground no free forthcoming in their party up line doesn't win the ball and instead it's Michael Harding that has it hand pass across the centre towards Timmy Minogue Minogue on the 45 takes the shoulder from Steve Walsh but sends this one in and sends it over the crossbar that point from Timmy Minogue the midfielder from Temple Derry Kenyans that is one goal and eight to four points now seven between them and Tipperary just beginning to come back just in a small bit of hesitation there in the, in, in the Limerick backs between Davis Tape and David Minogue probably had an opportunity to clear the ball and didn't and just have been punished there 21 minutes played then of the second half Limerick lead by 7 1-8 to 4 goal puck out sent down this new side Andrew uh, it was David Maloney that won it again he's deemed to have carried it out over this near sideline uh, Maloney doesn't think he did but the linesman is the man with the flag he's uh, awarded the line ball in favour of the men from Tipperary and it's going to be a chance for Michael Harding to take this one just shy of the 45 yard line away to our right hand side Limerick manager Jerry Molino holding a bottle of uh, Lucas sport in his hand as the line ball taken by Michael Harding sent across the centre of the park over the head of everybody winning possession of it Noel Hogan the captain on the 21 didn't bounce into his hand Hogan from an angle sends it in and sends it over the crossbar one goal and eight now to Limerick five points to Tipperary and Tip have got two points unanswered the latest coming from the captain Noel Hogan from the Laura Dorra Club and the stopwatch says 22 minutes and 50 seconds played of the uh, first half one eight to five points in the goal puck out not the greatest of one Tipperary look to win possession of it again but Tom Condon is back there to win it for Limerick on his own 45 very close towards the far sideline lost it to Patrick Maher and Maher plays it in danger here but out comes Barry Hennessy alert to the danger and plays it off near side looking to find David Storff Bilton Stapleton keeps this one in play very close towards the sideline picks it on the 45 and drives it towards the opposite 45 hand goes up of Ronan Sherlock for Tipperary launches it into back to where it came from drops on the 45 beautiful flick from Noel Hogan inside towards Cahill Dillon Dillon onto the 21 still going brought to ground referee says play away as Jody Ryan has it the referee said the hand pass from Cahill Dillon to Jody Ryan wasn't the hand pass it was a throw ball it's going to be a free the free is for Tipper for Limerick a chance for them to clear their lines but TJ Limerick just looked a little bit nervous in the full back line there when that ball went in yeah small bit in fairness to Kieran he stopped him up as best he could and I, I said your man was kind of fouled for, for throwing the ball but there's no doubt in the last five or six minutes Tip have come into the game a bit more and they've reduced the lead back to six points so definitely in the last five or six minutes they've come into the game a bit more Barry Hennessy took the uh, free down the far side towards Dennis O'Connor O'Connor has uh, been fouled right on halfway and he scored one from this exact position on the uh, seventh minute can he get one on the 24th minute almost 17 minutes later it's about 10 in from the far sideline right on halfway O'Connor picks and strikes we're watching the flight of the Schlitter this one drops in to the left hand side on this occasion and wide that's Limerick's second wide and Dennis O'Connor hit one from the exact same position 17 minutes ago yeah the first one he hit it was, was clearing the, the goals high at the back of the goals that one he didn't catch as cleanly and just kind of tailed to the left Ball puck out one by Tipperary down this near side of the park again Garrod Ryan puts up the hand wins possession of it taken towards this near sideline by David Stapleton still going across the centre now the hand pass goes towards Jody Ryan Ryan sends this one in it's dropping though to the left hand side and wide that's tip sixth wide of the game 24 minutes and 55 seconds of the opening half played here in Limerick's Live 95 FM on the Monster Intermediate Hurling Final goal puck out sent towards Paddy O'Brien down the far side O'Brien inside towards uh, Alan O'Connor far side of the uh, Semple Stadium a wild pull there by Dennis O'Connor the referee is awarded a free the free is in favour of Tipperary and a stupid free really by Dennis O'Connor to give away TJ yeah a one handed pull no real need of it the ball wasn't going anywhere now it's going to be just dropping right in the square Free going to be taken by Jim Bob McCarthy. Launches this one. It's well won by Steve Walsh down the far side. The man from Glenru plays his uh, football with Bally Landers and will be a part of the Limerick football panel on Saturday night. Forward towards Alan O'Connor. Gathers it on the 21. Strikes this one in. It's dropping to the right. Oh, it's a beautiful score from Alan O'Connor. It was very close to that far sideline. 21 yards out from goal. And Alan O'Connor gets his uh, second point or third point of the evening. His first from play. The other two came from freeze. Yeah. 
Yeah, and restores the lead back to seven points in part in the score because Limerick hadn't got a score in about six minutes and Tip were just starting to come into the game. So that was a big score for Limerick. 26 minutes played exactly. It was 20 minutes and one second when Limerick last scored. Goal puck out is taken short. Jim Bob McCarthy gathers it. One nine to five. Seven between them. McCarthy's ball down this near sideline. Should roll out over the sideline. It does. It's gone for a line ball for Limerick. Just away to our left-hand side. It's going to be David Stapleton of Dune who's going to take it. Tipperary warming up a sub. Ronan O'Mara is going to come on the field of play in just a couple of minutes. But uh, David Stapleton going to take this line ball just away to our left-hand side. And one nine to Limerick. Five points to Tipperary. That's the scoreline here at Semple Stadium. 26 and a half minutes played of the opening half on Limerick's Live 95 FM. A bit of pushing and shoving between Cahill Dillon and Gerardo Leary. The referee just tells them to move back a small few yards. And David Stapleton to take the line ball. Hits the stick of Cahill Dillon. Works out in favour of Limerick as Paddy O'Brien lays it towards Steve Walsh. Far side. Midway between the 45 and the 65. Long ball in towards uh, Alan O'Connor. Very close towards the far sideline. Kept in play well by Alan O'Connor. Himself was out over the line but the ball wasn't. Forward now looking to find the midfielder Andrew Brennan. Brennan gathers it a couple of yards in from the sideline. Strikes this one in. Strikes it high and strikes it over the glass bar. That's a fine score from Andrew Brennan, the Caroline club man. One goal and ten points now to five points. That's the situation here as we approach 27 minutes and that is Andrew Brennan's first score of the evening and a fine score it was too, TJ. Yeah, very composed and fairness him took his time so to dummy and got it back on his good side and struck a good score. Eight points between them again. Goal puck out. Sent down the centre of the park towards Paddy O'Brien, who's impressed in the middle of the field. Lays it towards Steve Walsh. Away comes Walsh. Beyond last year's beaten team. Plays this one forward. Looking to find David O'Neill over his head. And uh, sent down this near sideline. In towards the uh, man wearing number 11, Cahill Dillon. Seems to be operating at wing forward now. Dillon launches this one from the 65-yard line. Dropping around the square. Kieran Carey puts up the hand. Doesn't get to a chance of a goal for tip. It's in from Noel Hogan. Kieran Carey put up his hand he just couldn't reach it and Noel Hogan said thank you very much gathered it a couple of yards out from goal turned and struck and the one movement put it to the back of the net and five between them now 110 to 15 Noel Hogan gets Tipperary's first goal with a minute and 30 seconds to half time in fairness to Kieran he actually held his own man off quite well trying to catch the ball it was Noel Hogan who actually kind of steamed in from the other wing forward position who kind of just caused the trouble there who actually got the goal Ball puck out, sent down the far side. Limerick looking for a response straight away. The hand pass from Andrew Brennan, not the greatest. One by Tipperary and cleared down the far side of the field. Tipperary launching this one. Out comes Carey again, gets a touch to it, but it's Jody Ryan that has it broken down and Limerick gather possession of it. And away comes Tom Pondon, the knockaderry man with the white helmet, off towards David Stapleton. And Stapleton cleared down the far side towards Paddy O'Brien of Kilmallock. O'Brien on halfway, launches this one in, dropping around the square. Alan O'Connor swung the hurley at it, but it's gathered by Ronan Sherlock and cleared towards the 65 yard line. Back towards Alan O'Connor, the man who sent a blend. Lays a hand pass towards Peter O'Reilly. O'Reilly on towards the 21, block to ground. And it's going to be a free. The free is for Limerick. And Peter O'Reilly was on his way there towards the goal. The Tipperary man, John Lillis from Thurless Sarsfields, just caught him with the hurley, tripped him. Whether it was accidental or not, we'll never know. It's going to be a free. The free is for Limerick and a chance for them to put it over the crossbar. And Alan O'Connor, you'd fancy him to get his fourth point of the evening. He's third from a free. 29 minutes and 29 seconds played. Alan O'Connor standing over this one from 21 yards out. You'd imagine he wouldn't miss. He picks it and strikes it over the crossbar. The gap is six again. Alan O'Connor gets his fourth point. He's third from a free teacher. Yeah, lead restored to six points, which is important coming towards half time. I suppose the goal gives Tip a bit of hope there. The supporters kind of, uh, you mean, maybe list their seats small bit there for a while. But really, Limerick have been the better side in the, in the first half and are full value for a six point lead at the moment. Deserving of it at the moment and perhaps a couple more as well. Goal puck out towards Paddy O'Brien down the middle of the park, off towards David Stapleton and Stapleton bursting away towards the 65. Now on halfway, intercepted and won over there by uh, Tipper, by uh, Limerick and laid off now by Dennis O'Connor along the ground and Tipperary gather possession of it that's a fine shoulder by David Stapleton on the Tipperary man who still manages to come away with the ball and hand passes it near side it's won by Michael Harding Harding was fouled by Gerard O'Leary who broke the hurley in half and then claims he didn't use the hurley to stop the Tipperary man bit of a contradiction there I'm afraid Gerard it's <laughs> going to be a free the free is for Tipperary and I, I don't know how he could protest that he didn't use the hurley TJ because it was broken in half broken in half yeah the Gerard Leary is playing right cornerback at the moment and Davis Ableton playing right halfback and just tips seem to be getting a little bit of change out of this area to feel at the moment so that's maybe just one area that Limerick might need to keep an eye on. Jim Bob McCarthy with the free it's on the 65 yard line dead straight in front of a 
Rose here picks it and strikes it in. Looks to be going, dropping short. It's into the hand of the goalkeeper, Barry Hennessy of Kilmallock, who plays it down this near side towards the aforementioned Gerard O'Leary with the new Hurley. Plays it forward now towards Peter O'Reilly. On halfway, O'Reilly launches this one in, dropping towards Paddy McNamara. Can he win possession of it? Breaks the ball down, wins it himself and takes it out towards the 45, striking this one in. McNamara in and over the crossbar, 112 to 15. A fine score by Paddy McNamara of Maru Bohr. And that, by my reckoning, is his first score of the evening. To add to his four points last time out, it's one goal and 12 to one goal and five. And Paddy McNamara is off the score sheet and all of the Limerick full forward line now on the scoreboard. Yeah, a very good score by Paddy McNamara. As we said earlier on, he's got the aerial height on the full back. You know what I'm saying? He's way, high, way taller than him. But very good score out in front. Kai's ball and struck it over the bar very sweetly. We've played 31 minutes and 35 seconds of the opening half here. I think it's a 30 minute game at Simple Stadium. Line ball to be taken by Steve Walsh. Sent down this near side. Not the greatest, and it's won by Tipperary and Timmy Minogue launches it long. Kieran Carey comes out, and Carey gathers it as typical Carey style. The referee Pat Carey looks at the watch, blows the halftime whistle as Kieran Carey cleared that ball off. And Jerry Mullinow on the field to greet his team as they make their way off beneath us. One goal and 12 to one goal on five. And TJ, your initial thoughts on the first yeah, half? Yeah, Jerry, Jerry Mullinow would have to be very pleased. And I suppose Limerick in general would have to be pleased. One twelve is a good return in, in 30 minutes hurling. The forwards are moving well. Just had all the inside boys have scored. And as we were saying before the match that we had, like Don Hanley, Marquino and Ryan on, on the bench. At this moment in time, the way the guys are playing, we won't need him, which is a good thing. OK, well, we'll have further analysis here at Semple Stadium in Thurles after this short commercial break. Come back to us with the halftime scoreline of Limerick leading Tipperary 112 to 15 in the Munster Intermediate Hurling Final. Halftime analysis coming up after this break. Moment. Tipperary were short the midfielder uh, Michael Harding who has now made his way out onto the field so the play is underway and Garot Ryan gathers it straight away lays it towards the aforementioned Michael Harding very close towards this near sideline Limerick lead by seven then as we uh, start the second half Tipperary into the Limerick 21 yard line looking to win possession of it back there as Andrew Brennan for Limerick pokes the ball out only as far as uh, Paddy O'Brien of Kilmallock from the 13 yard line goes to ground no free says the referee play away which Tipperary do they're on to the 21 the referee has said uh, Ronan O'Mara the halftime substitution on the Tipperary team which has just been announced on the uh, good friend the public address the referee is awarded a free the free is for Tipperary it's down this near side and it's a chance for uh, Noel Hogan uh, the man who uh, got set up the goal in the first half to take this free sends it in and sends it over the crossbar one goal and six now for Tipperary one goal and 12 for Limerick Noel Hogan with the first point inside the first 55 seconds and that's just the start of would have wanted. Yeah, that's what they'll be looking for. I see they've just moved uh, Noel Hogan actually into full forward on Kieran Carey. I mean, Tip will be looking to get a few couple of points, get back into the game, and maybe get a bit more work rate from their forwards. Well, wherever you're listening to this on Limerick's Live 95 FM, hope you're enjoying it. 112 to 16, Limerick win possession of the puck out. Dennis O'Connor onto the 21, onto the 13. He can shoot, he does. It's taken a deflection off the stick of Michael Costello and Matthew Ryan and has gone over the crossbar. But Dennis O'Connor was eyeing up a goal on that occasion as he gathered it on the 45 ran to the 21 took his shot deflected over the crossbar all his own work and I believe that's his third point in play and you'd have to say at this stage in this match so far Dennis Conner has been impressive 137 gone that's a minute and 37 seconds Tipperary win possession of the puck out Patrick Maher on towards the 21 far side takes the shot oh what a save by Hennessy breaks out near side and Steve Walsh gets a touch to it that was a fine save by Barry Hennessy diving across the goal and Kieran Carey completes the clearance for Limerick down this near side Alan O'Connor breaks it down towards Peter O'Reilly O'Reilly on to the 45 now going to the 21 chance of a goal for Peter O'Reilly might have taken too many steps goes to ground the referee says play away as Tipperary look to clear it now with Jim Bob McCarthy picks it and strikes it down this near side in to end action at this moment up goes the hand of the Tipperary man only broken to Andrew Brennan Brennan is fouled it's going to be a free and it's going to be a yellow card as well I think for Gerard Ryan the Tipperary man who pulled straight across Andrew Brennan on that occasion but at one end it could have been a goal for Tipperary but Barry Hennessy produced a wonderful save and at the other end Limerick had their own opportunity yeah I said, I, Patrick Maher for Tipperary who was actually on their under 21 team as well who probably did a bit of damage for Tipper under 21s in the last 10 or 15 minutes they brought him to wing forward now he's a good carrier of the ball would look to be going into the far corner good save by Barry Hennessy and back down the field and then Peter Riley's thrown goal and the cornerback is Matt 
gets back and makes a great challenge. So end to end, as I said, yeah, you mean at, at this stage of the game, goals probably win matches. You know what I'm saying? So we've had two saves so far in the match, which is obviously you will be settled from a limit point of view. You don't want to concede a goal this year in the second half. Carl Dillon received the yellow card. He was the Tipperary man that got booked on that occasion, the man from Aherlow. So he's on a yellow card, and there's a Tipperary man injured way to our uh, left hand side. It's one of the cornerbacks, I think. It's Lee Mackey, the Carrick Davins club man, number two on the uh, match programme uh, that's uh, receiving treatment. Certainly one of the Tipperary cornerbacks. It is indeed Lee Mackey that's down receiving treatment away to our left-hand side. Didn't see what happened, but they seem fairly concerned about him. Yeah, I think that was kind of his result. I, I don't know whether he got a hurley or his boot to the last challenge on Peter O'Reilly when he was going through, but he definitely was in the thick of it, and I'd say that's a result of that challenge. And the indication has gone that Lee Mackey won't be able to continue. The so Tipperary are going to warm up a substitution, and it's going to be Kevin Maher who's going to uh, come on the field of play for Tipperary. He gets a bit of a cheer from the crowd, but uh, Mackey back to his feet away to our left-hand side. Mackey, of course, uh, a very famous name in Limerick, but uh, on this occasion it's a tip man that's called Mackey, and uh, his game is over. It is Lee Mackey. He's going to make his way off in the behind the goal away to our left-hand side. Going to be replaced by Kevin Maher, number 17 on his back and that, an enforced substitution for Tipperary, and uh, certainly Lee Mackey making his way off. A leg injury, TJ. Yeah, definitely a leg injury, and it was a result of the last uh, last uh, incident there with, with Peter Riley going through, and as I said, I, d I just think he probably put his leg in front of the, in the shot more than his hurley so I say that's where it came off four and a half minutes played then of the second half here in Limerick's Live 95 FM all this time play is going to resume with a free for Limerick on their own 65 yard line it's Dennis O'Connor who's going to take it Dennis O'Connor uh, away to our right hand side the substitution just being announced there in the public address so Lee Mackey off and Kevin Maher on and as I said, play to resume with a free for Dennis O'Connor on his own 65-yard line. The referee just tells him twice to take the free. He stands very much with the legs apart and the hurley pointing over the slither picks it on the 65 and drives it in. We're right behind it. It's gone to the left-hand side and wide. That's Limerick's uh, only third wide of the game so far. Their first of the second half comes from Dennis O'Connor. A long way out, still seven between them, 113 Yeah, a long way out. There was no problem actually with the distance because it was still clear and going high at the back of the goal so it was just accuracy small bit to the left goal puck out sent down the centre of the park Limerick looked to win possession of it instead it's tipped that gather the breaking ball playing it near side of the field and they've lost it and away come Limerick with it now it's Andrew Brennan near side just couldn't control it it's out over this near side line gone for a line ball in favour of the men from Tipperary and it's a chance for them through uh, Michael Harding down here in front of us on the halfway line to take this line ball as we watch it here Jerry Mullineau just uh, barks out a few instructions to his players with Limerick leading 113 to 16 and 5 minutes and 48 seconds played of the second half line ball is taken and sent across the centre where it's won by Cahill Dillon the man on the yellow card dispossessed wonderfully by Stevie Walsh and Walsh plays this one down the far side of the field up goes the hand of the Limerick man breaks it down in favour of David O'Neill doesn't uh, reach it though and it's won back there by uh, Kevin Maher for Tipperary down the far side launches this one clear towards the 21 two Limerick players go up for it over the head of both of them and breaks on here there's a chance here a real chance for Tipperary great block by Kieran Carey and I think it was Tom Condon as well that got a touch to that one the Tipperary man looked destined to stick it to the back of the net it's gone out for a 65 that was a golden opportunity of a goal for Noel Hogan the captain of Tipperary but a fine touch by both Tom Condon and Kieran Carey both getting a touch there yeah both of them well in there I suppose probably you'd probably said that Kieran got the touch but he was just about to pull the trigger and the boys were well in there so good defending are you uh, just favouring Kieran because uh, you played with him in years of old, perhaps? No, I, 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 I genuinely <laughs> do think he got back there in fairness to him. He's deadly at him with tackles. Some man, isn't he, to be Un still playing? Unbelievable. Brilliant to read situations. Saw the danger I, I, very quickly again there. And yes, he brings an all the experience to the game. And I mean, good to watch. If they get to the All Ireland final, you might tug out yourself. Timmy Minogue to take this <laughs> 65 down here in front of us of course we'd lose an analyst if that was the case 113 to 16 Limerick lead here Timmy Minogue or it's uh, Jim Bob McCarthy oh it's hit the post and come back out Jim Bob McCarthy's ball dropped in around the square it's broken out towards Michael Harding who sends it in to the right and wide a major let off there it broke in around the square the tip man got a touch to it it took a deflection off the crossbar came back out and luckily from a Limerick point of view Michael Harding put it to the right and wide yeah he did work definitely a break there for Limerick so it's just and this opening 10 minutes just don't want 
to concede a goal because that will give a tip a lot of impetus to start the second half. 113 to 16, the situation here at uh, Semple Stadium. But just a, a brief reminder for Limerick, the Tipperary just aren't out of the game just quite yet. Yeah, you just can't afford to get casual. I see Tipperary going to make another substitution. It's kind of going to be, you know, it's an important 10 minutes for them because they, they, they need to do the chase another seven points down, you know. Seven between them, Limerick lead, goal, line ball taken and won by Timmy Minogue. Back towards the line ball taker, John Lillis sends it across the centre, near side towards Michael Harding. Harding breaks the ball on the referee has said there was a foul there on Patrick Maher uh, he was pulled to ground by David Stapleton who's disposed of the helmet for the second half the referee is awarded a free the free going in favour of Tipperary down the far side and all this time Tipperary chipping away at Limerick's lead Noel Hogan got their uh, last point from a free that was inside the opening minute seven and a half minutes ago here comes Noel Hogan again picks this one and strikes it in off the stick of Barry Hennessy and over the crossbar could have snuck on now, but Hennessy was allowed to it. It's over the crossbar. 113 to 17 now. Only six between them. A tip beginning to chip away at Limerick. Yeah, would probably have started the second half a little bit better than they played in the first half, you know what I'm saying? So a bit more position in their forwards at the moment. But uh, Patrick Maher gone to wing forward is probably an improvement for them. He's carrying the ball. He won that last three there off Davis Stapleton. But in fairness to Barry Hennessy, he dealt with it very well. Tricky one, just crossbar height. You just don't know. You've often seen him sneaking into the roof of the net, so he just dealt with it well. One goal and 13 for Limerick. One goal and seven for Tipperary. We're playing nine minutes and five seconds of the second half on Limerick's Live 95 FM of the Munster Intermediate Hurling Final for 2008. Lime are the goal puck out, sent down the centre of the park. Tipperary through Garrow and Ryan, try to win possession of it, where it's won by Paddy O'Brien for Limerick, pulled in it only as far as the tip man who launches it up the field. That's a dirty stroke there on Steve Walsh by the tip man. The midfielder Michael Harding from Golden Kilfekel, he's going to be yellow carded. And uh, is there an injury as well to uh, the Limerick midfielder? fielder that I think is Paddy O'Brien that's gone down injured and Paddy O'Brien is having a fine game for Limerick Paddy uh, McAuliffe has gone out just to make sure he's not too badly injured but uh, certainly he'd be uh, a blow for Limerick but uh, might only be a minor injury TJ. Yeah he's going down holding his left knee there so uh, didn't see what happened that was kind of away from the play but bad pull there by the tip midfield yeah. it was very late so I mean he got a yellow card yellow card well. would have been harsh to give him any more than that but it was still a bad pull Michael Harding then number nine gets a yellow card and Limerick get the free which Alan O'Connor is going to take here in front of us it's right on the 65 yard line right here in front of us O'Connor picks it and strikes it looks to be going to the right that went badly to the right and wide and the Tipperary supporters just see a, a bit of uh, a gap now for Tipperary to come back into the game that's Limerick's fourth wide they hit two in the first half they've hit two in the second half DJ yeah I said, I mean, 10 minutes gone now I said we still hold a six point lead which is what you'd want 10 minutes into the second half but can't afford to be missing too many of these frees. Goal puck out was well won and sent in from Dennis O'Connor. Chance here, it's inside towards the full forward Paddy McNamara. Doesn't win possession of it. The referee has said he's going to award a free in favour of... Uh Still hasn't indicated, but I think it's going in favour of Tipperary. It's a note of the black book for Paddy McNamara as well. It's going to be a free out for holding the Tipperary fullback Michael Costello on that occasion. The free taken by Matthew Ryan, the goalkeeper, sent down this near side. Tipperary just beginning to get on top. Can they take their scores? Hopefully not. Gerald Ryan, midway between the 45 and the 65, across on the far side now towards number 21, Pam Morrissey. Morrissey drops this one in around the square. Kieran Carey gets a touch to it, only as far as Ronan O'Mara. O'Mara on the 21 strikes this one in to the left and wide eighth wide for Tipperary their first of the second half but Tipperary TJ just beginning to get on top and I suppose every team will have a spell of dominance it's whether you take your scores when you're yeah that's it Tipperary definitely missed a the score there but there's definitely more ball going to tip full forward and there's no doubt about that but as I said Limerick weathering the storm to a degree we're still holding a six point lead Limerick's live 95 FM 113 to 17 Tipperary uh, trailing Limerick the ball was won by the tip man from the goal puck out a shoulder from Peter O'Reilly the referee has said it wasn't a very fair one it was on the uh, centre back Jim Bob McCarthy who's down on the ground and the referee wants to have a word with Peter O'Reilly of Patrick's well or does he there's a bit of blood as well I think coming from uh, Jim Bob McCarthy the big centre back for Tipperary and uh, Certainly a uh, note of the number of Peter O'Reilly, I think is all it is, from the referee Pat uh, Casey of Waterford. Fairness to him, he's kept the game flowing fairly well. Yeah, in fairness, I suppose Peter O'Reilly, I thought he might get a yellow card for that because he was definitely a shoulder into, in, into the front of, of Jim Bob McCarthy. But maybe he's calling him back now, I don't know. But like he just looks to have given him a black book. But Jim Bob McCarthy will be OK. As it, maybe just a bloody nose or whatever, and he'll get on with it. Big um, man, isn't he? He's a big man. And he's probably started the second half pretty well for tip two, so they won't want him off the pitch for too long. He's uh, going to have to come off to get the 
uh, blood patched up, but uh, play going to resume with a free for Tipperary just away to our left hand side, just shy of the 45 yard line. On in his place is going to come Michael Phelan. We've played 12 minutes and 42 seconds. Second half hasn't so far lived up. We started out at the start of the year with the intention of winning the Munster Championship. We did that here tonight and we've one more thing to do before we'll be satisfied this year. We want an All-Ireland title back in Limerick this year. I'd like to, there hasn't been much success lads in, in Limerick and Hurling in the past few years and something like this means so much to us. And I'd just like to thank the supporters for travelling here tonight. You always travel the length and breadth of the country lads and I'd just like to thank you for travelling here. I'd, like to let, I'd also like to thank lads, uh, our management, uh, for all the hard work and grafting that they've done for the past two years, getting us prepared for this. I'd like to thank uh, our manager, Jerry Molyneux. Our trainer, Jerry Murphy. On first day, Pauline McCarthy. Our selectors, Pat Heffernan, Andy Kaneen, John Franklin and Jimmy Stapleton. I'd also like to thank the referee and his officials tonight. And last but not least, lads, I'd like to thank Tipperary. You're an absolute credit to the Jersey, lads. You've some fantastic hurlers there with you. I know that you had Conor O'Brien playing with you last year, and he's gone on to play senior. And I'd love to see more of you doing the same. And I'd like to wish you the best of luck in the near future. Three cheers for Tipperary, lads. Hip, hip! Hip, hip! Hip, hip! Go and lean on, I was reading it in the book. Yeah! Let's Give me a second. Okay, manager, Jerry, at the beginning of the year, what were your, uh, your thoughts? Did you think that come tonight you might be here and lift the Munster title? Well, I suppose, Dini, we would have to put in a fierce hard 12 months in 2007, and we were very, very disappointed, even these grounds after being beaten by Waterford. We were with them up to the last 10 minutes and they got a few lucky breaks and they took the victory. This year, on that night inside the dressing room, we said and we're going out, we'd be back, we're back. Hey, Jerry, have you and we won it and we're taking it home tonight. I heard you saying during the week that this was the last chance Limerick had, had of lifting Munster, any Munster silverware this year. And you said that whatever, whether they'll win or not, that this team would try tonight. Were you happy overall with the performance of the team on the night? Well, I think anybody that was in Simple Stadium tonight could only see one thing about that Limerick team. They had pride, they had passion, they had vigour, and the will to win was there. Did you think coming down, Jerry, in all honesty, did you think coming down, coming into the home of Tipperary Hurling, coming into the Lions Inn, as the saying is, did you think coming down that this team might, would pull it off tonight? In my mind, I had no doubt. We played Tipperary over in Newport, here in Gier. They beat us 317 to 25 points, and we had three of that team playing here tonight. So we know what we were bringing into this ground here tonight. We were bringing in 24 of the top hurlers in the county, and every one of them proved themselves out there tonight. You played a challenge game recently, Jerry, against New Down Shandrum, and it was a very hard game on the night. Do you think that that contributed, in the, uh, all those challenges contributed in a big way to making this a winning team? I think Dini, we played Newtown last Friday night. We beat them 222 to 118. When you play Newtown, they play a very fast game of falling. They're throwing the ball around. All fellas had to grip, get to grips of the pace of that game. And I think we showed that we had the pace and we showed it out there again tonight. We were flying there again for the final whistle tonight. The biggest fault I would have with the team, and I said to him in the dressing room before we came out, was that we were very slow to start. But we proved it tonight. We were five points up at halftime going in. That was 30 minutes of hard work done. And we went down the second half and we finished it off. What are you a bit worried, Jerry, when the goals came? They came at vital stages in the second, uh, in the second half there. And Tip pulled you back, we'll say, from eight points to five. What are you thinking at that stage? Maybe that, uh, you know, they could go belly up in us? No, Dini, because as I said to you already, this team. 
There is no fear in them. They won't drop their heads. You had Stephen Welch, Kieran Carey, Tom Condon, side there in the, in the back, just to mention a couple of them. They are huddled out of their skins. And no matter that, they took off Jim Bob McCarthy, a man that was good enough to be coming onto the senior team this year. They took him off, they brought him on full forward, they thought he'd do a job and carry again. You'll see what he done when he went in. So then you enjoy the rest of the Ooh. night now, and we'll enjoy it. OK, Jerry, thank you. But I go to the goalie first, he was the last line of defence. Barry, the game is over. The trophy is right at your feet. What does it feel like? Oh, it's just, it's amazing, really, to be honest, because in fairness, Limerick Ireland has been disappointing this year. But hopefully, we've restored a bit of pride back into the jersey. And to be honest about it, if you look around, you see all these happy faces. So we're hoping that another crowd will come out and crop out and they give us a go if we get it there. Did your team come on down the day? Had a good chance of winning it. Yeah, I've been honest about it. We train hard and we played a lot of matches like and we've been together a while and in fairness like there was a good buzz around the place today and when we stopped there and did our warm up in the college, in fairness you could know yourself that it was full on, we were ready for it. And you had brought off a few good saves. Ah Mr. Jesus, it's my job if I didn't to be better than that. Okay. Thanks, Daddy. Thanks. Thanks, congratulations. Now let's we have Alan Ock. We have Alan Ock on our, the one Limerick band of all the players, the one Limerick player that has lifted the silver world this year. Alan, congratulations. Thanks very much. Yeah. What, does it, what does it feel like, Alan? You walked across in front of the old stand, took the trophy from the chairman of the council. What was the feeling like? If there's any place you want to be for receiving a Munster title, it's above and simple stadium and it's absolutely unbelievable. All year waiting for this. Did you think? Did you think at the beginning of the year? Last year, you put up a great show here, and you kind of went out of it towards the end of the game. We were beaten by Watford, and I went home in the bus with you, and you said, "We get you guaranteed you'd be back again." Did you think during the year that you, you actually would be back for this night? We said it after after last year. I mean, we really let ourselves down against Watford. I mean, we were really up for it, and three goals there at the end uh, really killed us off that full forward. But. We said last year we were going to get back into it this year, do harder, harder training. There was a bit more emphasis on it this year, and uh, thank God we've done it here now today. Coming down in the bus, Alan, did you honestly think coming into Simple Stadium, coming into the back yard of Tipperary Hurling, did you think that you'd lift the trophy tonight? Never, never had a doubt about it. Never had, never had, had a doubt. Any said you in the game when you were squared up to those threes there? Had you ever a doubt at that stage? <laughs> Never, never had a doubt. It's here now we have it. At what stage in the game did you say to yourself, this game is won, I'll be handling this trophy? <coughs> the final whistle, that's what I knew. <laughs> OK, Alan, th thanks for being here. <laughs> With me here, I have Liam Lenhan, all the way from Toon the Fuller in West Limerick. We're back in the mountains in West, West Limerick. We have Liam Lenhan, the chairman of the Limerick County Board. Liam, what does it feel like being here tonight? Oh, sure, it's great to win here in Simple Stadium. The field of legends and it was a great win for Limerick you know and it was hard fought all the way and that's the way to have it and I was very, very impressed with the young players especially you know they stood up tight and they were counted when Tipperary came, came back at us there in the second half and it's a great win you know I suppose after the seniors and uh, 21's just being caught at the post pipped to the post as they say it was great to come here tonight and win so it's it definitely give a boost to uh, Limerick Hurley. Did you think on the way down and did you think that uh, you were there with a right chance? I felt we were there was a the right chance, but you could never be sure until the final whistle goes. I mean, to play it everything has to stay in the second half, especially that's five minutes of the game. But fair juice to the backs and to Barry Hines in particular, he had a fine game and goal. Were you, were, you, were you surprised and happy, of course, that there was such a big Limerick support here tonight? Look, everyone knows that we have the best supporters in the country. And it was great to see them here. And it's great tonight to have a cup and something to cheer about at the end of the day. 
It has been a good has been a good week for Limerick. Uh, we'll say uh, following up from last Saturday night win by the footballers. Oh, I should last Saturday night was just fantastic. Like to, to play the Royal County, one of the foremost football counties in Ireland, and we wanted to put pure football and determination goes and characters who were st- up to be counted and they were counted and hopefully we can do the same again next Saturday against Kildare. Liam you retired recently from Tournafala National School and you'll have more time now for the year and we all wish you the best of luck in retirement and hope that it's long and a happy one and that hope that you lead Limerick to further glory. Thanks very much Jim. Okay Liam, thanks a minute. Alright Kevin. And now I have with me here uh, Padre Patrick O'Brien from Kilmallock, under 21 county medal winner with Kilmallock already this year. Patrick, what does it feel like standing here tonight having lifted that trophy? Ah, uh, sure, you know, it's brilliant. Brilliant lift for Limerick Hurling. Um, I suppose losing 21s last week to Tip was a big blow, and this is only makes us make the laugh feel better and grant to get one over to Prairie and Torles, you know. Coming down tonight, did you think that you had a chance or what were your feelings on the way down to the match? Oh yeah, I knew, I knew we came down to win this match, we were 100% confident we were going to win the match. Well, we came down last week 100% confident we were going to win but it didn't go away. You have to be have to be positive minded and we were positive and tonight, thank God we got the win. You played very well on the night. Yeah, we did. We, we had a great start, you know. Uh, we won't be happy with the second half though, you know. We're going to have to go back and work on that because, you know, call where click in, he won't leave us get back into. So, you know, we have plenty of work to do. Thanks a million. Congratulations. Great to Thanks win. very much. Thank you. Okay. And with me here, I've Stephen Welsh. Stephen from Ballyland is a member of the Limerick football team who won in the Gaelic Rounds on Saturday night last year. One of the biggest surprises of the year. Stephen, this wasn't as big a surprise as it was. Well, um, no, I suppose it wasn't, you know. But we knew coming down here we'd have a tough game against the likes of Tipperary, you know. We've heard they have a lot of big names playing there tonight. And just talking to Matt there, it's... It's more satisfying than anything, you know. There's a monkey off the county's back now after tonight, and it's it's great for the lads because they put in a great amount of effort, you know. The pace of the game, as uh, by comparison with the games that you've been playing lately, you've been playing football. Was the pace of the game? Did you find the pace of the game much faster tonight? Well, it's all, yeah. You, you always get a tough game when you come down to Turles, you know, because it's a big open field and there's plenty of space. So you, your, your first touch, as well as your 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 fitness, has to be spot on, or else you're going to get found out. And to be honest, I, I say there's a lot of the boys going to feel it tomorrow, you know. As I said, there's no hiding places in Simple Stadium. There's no hiding places in Simple Stadium. Listen, no. we wish you the best of luck on Saturday night, yeah. and hope that you both are on and push it on from here. Thanks very much. Okay, Stephen. Nice. Now I have Matt Callan, Matt from the Vale Star. Matt, what do you think of that? I'm obviously delighted then. Uh, it's, it's, it's a welcome relief. We've, ha- we've had some desperate disappointments this year, particularly in hurling. The, the seeing a hurling team against Staffley, um, the, the under-21 team here just six days ago was, was, was just heartbreaking and tantalising. Um, this is a welcome relief and, uh, you know, it, it's a win that could lift everything, you know. That was great Limerick support here on the night, mate. Yeah, absolutely. It was very encouraging to see so many people from Limerick here tonight because they would be excused for not coming. They have been disappointed so often. But, you know, Tullus is a special place to play hurling and it's a particularly special place to win a Munster final, you know. And we're going to savour and enjoy More this. Confident one. enough during the week that I might pull this off. Yeah, I, I, I was I was pretty confident enough that, um, and particularly when I saw the lineup, I, I, I became more confident because I have seen most of these lads on numerous occasions, you know, with their clubs during the year, and and um, I, 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 you know. I was impressed with the line out and I was happy with the line out and I felt that we would give it our best shot and that you'll give us a good bang in the paper next week sir oh yeah it's a pleasure to write about a winning Munster Championship team you know okay, it's a welcome relief ok mate thanks a minute now I have Helen Cross here Helen is PRO of the Limerick County Board Helen must be a great relief to the, oh. and in your first year as PRO that you have lifted the trophy absolutely absolutely I'm so proud tonight that Limerick actually did it um, we've had such disappointments in the past number of weeks uh, and this is just absolutely fantastic. goes without saying. Absolutely fantastic. On your way down tonight, were you confident, Helen? Um, I was quietly confident, but you never know. I mean, Tipperary like, can turn the screw on the last minute, as you all know. And uh, I, I was delighted with the, t- with the line-out, to be honest. And I felt there, you know, I know a lot of the players, particularly the East lads. At any um, stage in the game, did you think for slipping from us? Or when did you think the way... Well, I'll tell you, I was very nervous in the last 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, very happy that Tip... Uh, uh, we'll say that goal didn't go in for tip and that they had a couple of wides in the points but I was really so happy. happy going home Del- absolutely delighted okay, for the county. Thanks, thanks very much. Okay, and with me here in the centre of 
Simple Stadium. I'm humbled to be interviewing a man of this name, Liam O'Gahern from Radio Limerick, or the new 95 FM. Liam, what did you think of that performance? You were doing commentary for the radio, and my daughter rang me and she said that, mind that fella, he'll, get, he'll jump off the stand. He was so excited. I, it was very exciting towards the end, all right there, I suppose. Uh, Limerick held on very well. A great first half performance. Uh, won 12 at half time. It was, it was very good in the first half, and uh, I suppose got sucked into a small little bit of a, a war of attrition in the second half, but it held on very well. And fine performance and first Munster title in 10 years. You had a great vantage point. You were up and top. Well, as the game was played, like what were, were you happy with the way they played? And first half, I think anybody would have to be happy with it. It was a, a fine first half performance, and that goal midway through the first half was just a, a tonic of a goal. Really, got Limerick uh, shot in the arm. They gave away the goal coming up to half time, which I suppose Jerry wouldn't have been too pleased about at half time. But uh, still, Limerick battled out, battled well in the second half, and uh, thoroughly deserving of the win in, in the hallowed turf. And to do it in the backyard of, of Tipperary as well makes it all that bit extra special. And from where you saw it up in the stand, up in the top of the stand, and you had a better, you had a better view than anybody. And I know that you mentioned different players during your commentary because my daughter was telling me, if you were to, if somebody was to say to you, what line, what player, what swung this game or held this game in Limerick's favour, if you were to pick out an incident, a person, a player, something, a purple patch, where, what would you say? Well, I suppose uh, I probably mightn't pick a, a, a Limerick moment. I think the Tipperary moment that happened just down there in the goal away to our right as, as we're standing now when uh, the uh, tip captain was going through and uh, he was looked for all eternity as though he was going to stick the ball to the back of the net with about 10 minutes left or 5 minutes left. Would have made a, a lot tighter game of it, but uh, thankfully he stuck it wide and Limerick held on for the victory. But I think 1-15 to 15 and, and the 5 subs that came on as it was on the night did absolutely brilliant for Limerick. You couldn't really single out anybody in particular particular but uh, I think Kieran Carey deserves special mention as Jerry Mullen said he's 38 years of age and he played like uh, an 18 year old there tonight. On that, ha- on that happy note Liam we'll say thanks very much and hope that you'll be coming to me maybe on a Limerick win again a Saturday night in the football. Fingers crossed and uh, I can tell you we'd, we'd great crack last Saturday night with the football so hopefully they'll continue on and we'll be in two All-Ireland finals by the end of the year. Okay Liam thanks for <laughs> Professional. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I smile. Put your hand. Should get an extra for this one. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Good job, boys. Win. Look at that, Nicola. Look at Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look Let's look, boys. What do I say?
Det er fair play til det lemmelige kvinde, der bare lige brown mand for liften der kop til det. And my cousins all the way from Cheltenham enjoy that game. Good game. Good game. Good game. So Holland is alive and well in monster. Yes. So the best to look to in the All Ireland the rest of the series, but by God, we'll be back here with the McCarthy Cup. Think about it, in the square in September. There you go. The Lee McCarthy <laughs> really take that. They don't know what Limerick. <laughs> so sports in Limerick. Cheers, lad. <laughs>
Limerick and it's all over. Monster victory for Limerick. The intermediates claim Munster glory in Semple Stadium tonight on a full-time scoreline of 2-6.